many of the systems of equations that we see in textbooks are kind of sanitized. The uh, coefficients are all integers. The right-hand side is an integer or integers. And, and the answers oftentimes come out to be quite nice numbers. But uh, let's take a look at this system of equations I've given us here. And you can see that now we have some uh, real live decimal coefficients and right-hand side values are decimals. So what I did is I took this um, system and I used MATLAB to solve it. When I did that, this is the solution I got. Um, you can see x1 and x2 here. And it should be clear that those two uh, are not exact solutions. We would guess that, uh, in fact, that there are more decimal places to uh, both of those. So um, what it appears is that um, the solution does, or the system does not have an exact solution. So let's remember that um, we could actually write uh, this system in a matrix form. So if we wrote the matrix form for this, it would be 5.63 and uh, negative 2.05 and then 3.62 and 7.89. Uh, times our vector x1, x2 equals the right-hand side vector 1.7, 3.1. So um, one way we can check our answer to this kind of thing is to actually take our x1 and x2 and put them into a vector and multiply them by the matrix A. Let me remind you here, so this is A. This would be x, and this would be b. And so we can then take a times the x we obtain and see how close we get to b. So when I did that, um, what I got for ax is the following. And you can see that it's very, very close to the vector b, but it's not exactly the same. So one way we can try to quantify how well we've done at obtaining a solution is to use the solution we have and multiply it by the matrix A. We don't know what the actual solution is, but we can take AX uh, and compare that with B. So that's, um, that's the way we'll be uh, computing uh, an error for our solutions to systems of equations. So let's go on and uh, talk about that in, in a little more um, symbolic sense. So if I'm given uh, a solution, a system AX equals B uh, with um, solution um, X, okay, I can define the error in my x that I found by the following. We define the error, and I'm going to use the symbol epsilon. The error is actually a vector. So what it is is um, ax minus b, okay, where x is the solution obtained. So um, given that uh, it's likely we'll obtain a solution that's not exact, then AX is not exactly B. So AX minus B is some non-zero vector, and we will define that vector to be the error vector. Now, oftentimes, we would like to have a single number for our error. And so what we can do to get a single number out of this is simply take the magnitude. So um, the error itself, rather than the error vector, is the magnitude of the vector E. Okay, and remember that the, um, the magnitude of a vector, so for instance, if E, uh, or not E, but epsilon, as a vector had components epsilon 1, epsilon 2, dot, 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 epsilon, n, sub n. OK, 
Okay, then the magnitude of E, or magnitude of epsilon, excuse me, is the square root uh, of the sum of the squares of all of those. So it's square root of epsilon 1 squared plus epsilon 2 squared plus dot 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 plus epsilon n squared. So that's the way that we'll um, find both an error vector and an error. Um, if Again, if we want a single number, the error is what we'd like to look at. But sometimes we might want to look at the error vector to see if there's particular components in which we have more error than others. So that's, uh, that's the story on error for a um, solution to a system of equations.